often have we heard it said, who knows the thoughts of a child? Now, if most parents were absolutely honest, we would have to admit, no, not I. It's Saturday morning at the Massey house. Mother, I'm ready to leave now. Leave her where, honey? Well, I have an appointment with Dr. Drake. He wants to check my glasses again, remember? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Bye. All right, honey. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Have a safe oh, trip. Is that this morning's mail? Mm-hmm. Is there anything for me? No, there isn't, dear. Oh. Okay, well, I'll see you later, Mom. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, Vicki, wait a minute, honey. Uh, put this in the mailbox for the postman to pick up. It's not for us. There's someone named Canfield, I think. Oh, well, it is for us. For me, Camille Canfield. Camille Canfield. Mm -hmm. I changed my pen name again. I thought it might bring me luck. Did it? No, another rejection slip. Oh. Which story is that, honey? Gone with the leaves. The Civil War romance, huh? Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I thought we decided, Vicki, that uh, you didn't really know anything about the Southern Bells. I mean, the modern or period. Well, can I use my imagination? <laughs> Of course you use your imagination. But imagination has to be based on something real. Otherwise, it doesn't have any meaning, you know? Now, now the best writers that I know, I mean, they write from, from their own experiences, from something that's way down deep inside. That's what you've got to start to do. Write from your own experiences. You do have talent. But you can't develop it by copying other people's work. Now, you've got to be honest in your writing as you are in everything else. You've got to be Vicki Massey, not Camille Canfield, hmm? Yeah, I guess so. All right. <laughs> Hurry up. You're going to miss your train. Okay. 10.05, huh? Bye, Mom. Bye, Bye dear. Mom. Oh, honey. Yes, uh, who, Who's going to drive you to the station? Oh, well, Paul said he would. Good. See you guys later. Okay, how's yeah. that? Uh, honey, be sure and come home right after your appointment. Well, Mother, you said I could stay and have lunch with Mary Lou Patton, remember? Oh, I forgot. All right. Give Mrs. Patton my love and tell her I'll call her next week, dear. All right. It's fine. Bye. Bye. Now, see you next Friday at the Allendale Station. Mm -hmm. If it's okay with my mom, we'll come and pick you up. Okay. Well, I better call you and let you know for sure, though, okay? Bye. And listen, tell your mom thanks a million for having me over to lunch. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye, Mary Lou. Uh, the best writers that I know, uh, well, they write what they know about. And, I mean, they write from their own experiences. And that's what I think you've got to start doing. They write from their own experiences. From their own experiences. <laughs> Come in here to wail. We'll get a few moldy figs, too. Mm -hmm. The button down set. Well, I, I beg your pardon. Touristville. Oh, well, I I'd like a table, please. Oh, crazy. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Sit down, kid. Sit down. Are you sure I won't be intruding? No, you'll be doing us a favor. Sam. Don't you get it? Thank you very much. Wait, cool, Rita. It's very nice of you to invite me to join you. It's our pleasure. You come here often? Oh, 
Uh, well, I make the scene now and then. You uh, live in a neighborhood? Well, I, I get around. You sure he's the heat? Pretty sure. Just one? Yeah, but I think he's with it. So split. If he tags? You're clean. But if he's six, what about you? I'll drop it. I guess. Um, I, I beg your pardon, but I'm afraid I'm not quite up on the local colloquialism. Don't worry about it, kid. Rita. Well, I gotta go, kid. See you later. Oh, oh well, it, it was very nice meeting you. Yeah. Um, I think I probably should... Just still, kid. You have an audit. I'm in here. Gosh, it's so dark in here. It's just all different kinds of coffee. I suggest cappuccino. Oh, all right. Uh, cappuccino, please. What is that? Just some kind of a special... Coffee? Oh, you'll like it, kid. Well, I gotta be going. i see you around. What's the idea? What I do? How do you pass the stuff now? Come on. Why Stand right much. there. Is that your first miss? Yes. May I look inside it? Well, I got nothing in the purse. That's what I thought. Weed. Weed? I don't act in as it miss. Marijuana cigarettes. Marijuana cigarettes? Well, all right, how come did on, they get in my... Let's all get on. I'm on the side. Come on. Good night. Okay. Come on. Mom! 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 Uh, pretty soon now, sweetheart. Oh, hello, Mr. B. Because right after dinner, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. We're all going to the dance at the gym. Mm -hmm. That is all except Maria. How are you? Judy and I are on the decoration committee, so we have to go early. Streamers and balloons, you know. You're doing it again. You're talking, and I can't understand a word you're saying. You're just p -p 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 like that. Streamers and the balloons. You know. Lovely. <laughs> now just keep it up, huh? Oh, Mother. Yeah. I must have missed Vicky. Is Hi. she here? Hi. No, she's not. What do you mean you missed her? Wasn't she on the train? No, she wasn't on it. Oh. Oh, well, she, she probably missed it, and she'll come in on the next one. Will you pick her up on that? Is it the 710? Uh, yeah, all right. Will you pick her up on that? Mm -hmm. Fine. And, uh, honey, uh, you'll have time, of course, before you dress for your date, because you've got a date, oh, you know. Oh, yeah, I have time. All well, right. Listen, you want me to set the table? It's your turn. You better hurry. Okay. Dinner's almost set. Please, don't you believe me? Then who told you you could make a buy from Sam? I don't know what you mean. Look, miss, we know Sam has a long narcotics record. So why don't you make it easy on yourself and tell us all about it? Because I don't know anything to tell. They're getting younger all the time, the poor, sick, mixed-up kids. Well, I'll try Sam again. Maybe he's ready to open up now. Let me know when she's ready to talk. Young lady, you are in big trouble. Can I have a drink of water? Look, um, you don't want to go through this alone. You're going to need all the help you can get. So why don't you make it easy on yourself and tell me who your folks are so I can call them. What'd you do, forget your pipe? Mm -hmm. Well, that's too bad because I brought you some new tobacco and I thought you'd like it. Mother? Yes, honey? She wasn't on the 710 either. She, she wasn't on it? Well, no. I even checked with the station master and the conductor, and she just wasn't on it. Mother, you don't suppose something's happened to her? Uh, no, 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 of course not, honey. Uh, oh, don't look so worried. Uh, why don't you go on upstairs and get dressed, honey? Your date will be here and you won't be ready. Uh, uh, and thanks, Marnie. Uh, don't worry, honey. I feel funny right in here. You are worried, aren't you? Yes, I am. I... I think I'll just call the patents and see. Ready, Mr. B? Oh. So am I. Yeah, well, goodbye, honey. Goodbye, Mom. Mm -hmm. Have a good time. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, sweetheart. We'll meet you in the car, Mr. Well, B, okay? You want to come along? Uh, no, no, I, I'll stay here. I, I, I want to make this call. And Paul, don't say anything to the girls, huh? I won't. Don't worry. All right. Uh, Paul, listen. Uh, nothing. She better have a solid gold excuse when she does get here if she knows what's good for her. You give her what for. I certainly will. Don't be long now, will you? I'll be right back. Yeah. Little baby. 
they do to me? Depends on the judge. Is it a first offense? I don't even know what a marijuana cigarette looks like. Look, maybe you were buying it for some of your friends, huh? No, I wasn't. You know, we know what's going on with some of these high school kids these days. And let me tell you something, miss. We intend to stop it. Well, I think you should. They've got a lot of evidence against you. And the judge might just decide to make an example of you. Especially if you won't cooperate. So why don't you give me your name? I can't. I just can't. Yeah, I think you're making a big mistake. Camille Canfield. Okay, and your address? Come on now. Come on now. Okay. You leave me no choice. I'm gonna have to book you and put you in juvenile hall. At least overnight. Gang all safe and sound. Yes. Looks like it's going to be quite a party. Oh. Well, I, uh, I haven't heard anything from Vicky yet, but I did call Mrs. Patton, and she said that she left there at 3 o'clock and plenty of time to catch that 4.02. Now, please I, don't I, worry, Chris. You'll be here pretty soon. I, do you know what time it is now? Five after eight. Oh, look who's telling who not to worry. Even you're watching the time, aren't you? Chris, come on, sit down. Yes. Oh, you know, I stopped at the station on the way back here and talked to the station master. And? Well, he said he'd, he'd call us if she wasn't on the 10.05. If? If she's not. Where can that child be? It makes me so mad. Chris, come on. Try to get a hold of yourself. Uh, I'm sorry. Paul, I've just got to go into New York. I don't want to sit here and do nothing. I'll just... Chris, Chris. You... Now, what are you going to do in the city? I don't Mr. know, but Chris I... around the streets all night long. Now, believe me, it's better to stay right here by the telephone in case she calls. Yes, but that's just it, you see. I, I know there's something wrong or she would have called by now. She always calls or she's going to be two minutes late. Paul, look, she's the one child that I can depend on. I know there's something wrong. Chris, will you please try to calm down now? Uh, hi, kid. You got a cigarette. No, I don't. I'm sorry. What you in for, anyhow? They say for having marijuana cigarettes, but it's not true. I'm innocent. <laughs> well, sure. Aren't we all? Just stick to your story, baby. Yeah, they'll only keep you here a couple of days, and then they'll take you in front of his honor. <laughs> well, why are you here? Well, I'm a little too friendly. That's <laughs> my trouble. They don't like me being so friendly. Well, is that a crime? You make it fun of me. Oh, leave her alone. Can't you see she's green? I like to eat, see? And I like a roof over my head. And the kind of jobs I get just don't amount to very much. And I'm not crazy about a diet of beans. I'll take steak every time. And there's plenty of guys around here anxious to pay for my steak. Will you be quiet? Can't you see I got the granddaddy of all headaches? So it's my fault you get tanked up, huh? I I'm sorry about your headache. Don't waste your pity. It's just a lush. I'm a lush, huh? Well, I'll tell you what you are, and it ain't very pretty. Oh, shut up! Let's see how friendly you can be with all your teeth knocked out. Yeah. Please don't fight. Swing. Just go ahead and swing. Oh, please don't fight. Please don't fight. Please! <laughs> Well, yes, Mr. Bowman. Vicki wasn't on the 10.05. Oh. Sorry. She wasn't on it. Thanks, Mr. Bowman. Thanks for letting us know. New York Police Department, please. That's right, Massey. M-A-S-S-E-Y, Victoria Massey. Then you'll call us if you hear anything. Cigarette. 
16th station you called. Well, if they haven't heard anything by morning, they'll turn it over to missing persons. Morning? You have to give them time. Right now, Paul, time is standing still. I just feel like I'm going to break wide open. I'll start calling the hospitals. <laughs> Just as though that city had swallowed her up. Come on, sit down. Let's give that phone a chance to ring. No, it's after 11.30. I better go pick up those kids. Paul, do you know how... Drink this. Do you know how many young girls just disappear in big cities every year and they're never, never even heard of again, ever? Now, Chris, don't think it. Don't even think that. She'll be all right. I'll be right back. Uh, uh, don't tell the girls anything about it. Well, darling, I already said I won't. All right. Drink that. some rest. Oh, I... Rest now. That it's Vicky's pen name. She just might have, or she might have, called the police department back and asked her. Camille Canfield. Camille Canfield. Yes, please. That's stupid. I don't know why. I, why I didn't think of it before? New York uh, Police Department, please. Sergeant Paul Belzer again. Just on the hunch. Try Camille Canfield. That's right, Canfield. I'll hold on. He's checking. Don't get your hopes up. You have? He... Oh, oh. God, she's sick. Arrested? Where is she? Juba. What charge? We'll be there in an hour. For what? Narcotics. Narcotics? But that's impossible. Vicky, 
funny. You're all right now. Listen to Mama, huh? Listen, I want you to tell me what happened. Exactly what happened, and don't do leave out one thing. Do you hear me, honey? Not a thing. Well, well, after you talked to me about writing from my own experiences, yes. well, I got to thinking. Yes? I, I, you what? You got to thinking, and then what, honey? Go ahead. So, after I left Mary Lou's house, yes. I just walked around in, in Greenwich Village. Yes. <laughs> I'd read a lot about the artists and the, and the poets and, and the coffee houses where they all sit around talking. Yes. Especially about this one place called 13 Dugan's Alley. Yes, and then? And so I, I went inside. That's it, Mother. That's all. Now, Vicki, listen to me. Is that absolutely all? You haven't left out one single solitary thing. That's exactly what happened. All right, honey. She's telling the truth, Sergeant. Could be. If she'd have just talked to us last night, told us her real name and address, might have saved us a lot of trouble. Honey, why didn't you call me Because last I night? didn't want to disgrace the family and be in all the newspapers and everything. Supposing it had been in the newspapers, at least you would have said yourself and me one of the most miserable nights. Oh, I know. sweetheart. I'm sorry, Mom. You going to hold her? If so, I'll call my attorney. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. You see, Sam has a long record as a user, but so far not as a pusher. And he only had a couple of bucks on him when we picked him up, so it doesn't look like any money changed hands. These deals are always strictly cash. Apparently, Sam spotted me, so he was just trying to get rid of the stuff. She's free to go? Sure. I'm sorry this whole thing had to happen. And I'm sure you'll understand how careful we've got to be when I tell you that 75% of all narcotic addicts started out between the ages of 14 and 18. And 90% of the teenage addicts started out by smoking marijuana. This is Massey, each year thousands of teenagers, good boys and girls from substantial responsible homes are threatened by innocent association with narcotics users and pushers. Young lady, after this, if I were you, I'd stay out of places like 13 Dugan's Alley. Oh, I will, I promise. It's all right. Here we go now, Sergeant. Mother, I just want to forget that it ever even happened. Oh, no, you don't. No, Vicki, you want to remember it. You want to learn from it, and you want to write about it, you hear me? And you write about it just like it happened to you, and write it so well that maybe you'll help some little kid from finding it out for himself firsthand. Understand? Hmm? Oh. Well, what's the matter now? I'm hungry. Oh, sweetheart. Come on, I'll take you two girls to breakfast. <laughs> Come on, honey. All right. He who suffers remembers. Well, good night. And we'll see you next week.